In this video I'll demonstrate the Heathkit IB1B impedance bridge. I'll give some background on what impedance bridges are, the features of this unit, and give a demonstration of it being operated. An impedance bridge is a test instrument that can measure resistance, capacitance, inductance, and sometimes other parameters such as dissipation factor, or D, and storage or quality factor, or Q. The name comes from the fact that it uses a circuit known as the Wheatstone bridge to determine the value of a component. When no current flows in the bridge circuit, it's balanced and the value of the component under test can be determined. They often use a sensitive meter to indicate bridge balance. Variations of the Wheatstone bridge circuit can measure the quality factor of inductors and the dissipation factor of capacitors. Dissipation factor is the inverse of Q. A more commonly used parameter for capacitors today is equivalent series resistance, or ESR, and it's related to dissipation factor, but most impedance bridges cannot measure ESR directly. Some instruments measure the power factor of capacitors, often as a percentage. Power factor is similar to dissipation factor and is in fact approximately equal to dissipation factor for capacitors that have an ESR much lower than their capacitive reactance, which is usually the case. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit sold a number of impedance bridges, starting with the IB1 in 1950, up to the digital IT2240, which was sold until 1990. Heathkit also sold capacitor testers, which could measure resistance, capacitance, and inductance. These units tended to be lower in cost than impedance bridges and were used mainly for testing capacitors for value as well as leakage. They often used an eye tube as an indicator rather than a meter and were not as accurate as a bridge. I have a separate YouTube video on the Heathkit IT11 capacitor checker shown here. The IB1B is a battery-powered impedance bridge. It was introduced in 1951 and was the successor to the IB1 from 1950, which was almost identical. It's not clear how long it was offered by Heathkit. One source says until 1966, but this is doubtful as the IB2, which came out in 1952, appears to be the successor to the IB1B. The unit seems to be quite rare, with only a few units having appeared on the Internet. I've not seen it listed in any Heathkit catalogs after 1951. My best guess, therefore, is that it was only offered for a year or so, from 1951 until the IB2 came out in 1952. Despite its rarity, it's not a particularly valuable or sought-after unit. I checked eBay for recent selling prices and did not find any sold over the last few months. An IB1 recently sold for $45. As I'm recording this, there's an IB1B currently up for auction on eBay. One source reported that the IB1B sold new for $69.95, which would be equivalent to over $600 today, making it a reasonably expensive piece of equipment beyond the budget of most hobbyists. Heathkit promoted it as a laboratory-grade instrument suitable for test labs and schools. The unit has been called a clone of the General Radio Model 650 impedance bridge. It's very similar to it both in features and appearance. It can measure resistance from 10 milliohms to 10 megaohms, capacitance from 10 picofarads to 100 microfarads, and inductance from 10 microhenries to 100 henries. Eight ranges are provided. It also measures Q of inductors from 1 to 1,000, and dissipation factor of capacitors from 0.002 to 1. Accuracy is about plus or minus 3% for resistance and capacitance, and plus or minus 10% for inductance. It uses a meter for indicating bridge balance when measuring resistance, and external headphones, which were not included, when measuring inductance or capacitance. For DC measurements, it uses an internal 6-volt battery 
For AC measurements, it uses an internal 1 kilohertz oscillator using a device called a Hummer. It can also make measurements using an external signal generator. Resistance measurements use a Wheatstone bridge circuit. Inductance and capacitance measurements can use either Maxwell or Hay bridge circuits. The Maxwell bridge is used for devices with low Q factor and the Hay circuit is suitable for high Q devices. The internal circuitry uses all passive components with no tubes or transistors. The unit weighs about nine and a half pounds. Like most Heathkit products, it was offered as a kit that the user assembled. Calibration did not require any instruments. It came with a 1000 ohm 1% 1 tolerance calibrating resistor. Let's go over the front panel controls and connectors. A resistor under test is connected to the upper left terminals marked R, while capacitors and inductors connect to the LC terminals on the upper right. Originally the unit was meant to be powered by an internal 6 volt battery of a type that's now obsolete. At some point this unit was modified to bring the power connections out to two terminals at the top. It can now be powered by an external battery or power supply as I will be doing here. The meter indicates bridge balance when measuring resistance. It's a center zero 200 microamp meter made by Simpson but also has the Heathkit name on the scale indicating that this is an original meter. I've seen some IB1B units on the internet that have a more modern looking plastic meter that I don't believe is original. The dial on the upper left selects whether to measure resistance, capacitance high or low D, or inductance high or low Q. The dial on the upper right selects one of eight measurement ranges. The dial also lists the formulas for Q and D factor. Q equals omega L over R and D equals omega C R. The dial below the meter selects whether the detector is external, typically headphones, the shunted or less sensitive meter, or the meter with full sensitivity. By the way, the label GALV stands for galvanometer, an old name for a sensitive current meter. To the right is the selector for the generator, either the internal 1 kilohertz Hummer, an external generator connected to the EXT gen jacks, or DC from the battery. To the left is the selector for measuring dissipation factor used when the mode is set to D. Below that is the selector for balancing dissipation factor or Q when the mode is set to DQ. And below that is the selector for balancing Q when the mode is set to Q. The large knob labeled CRL is for balancing the bridge when measuring capacitance, resistance, and inductance. The component value is read from this dial, so it's made quite large. The jacks at the bottom are for connecting an external detector for AC measurements, typically a set of sensitive high impedance headphones. To the right is a connector for an external signal generator, which I'll describe later during the demo. The wooden case is a little unusual for Heathkit test instruments. The top panel is metal and follows the gray with red lettering color scheme used by Heathkit instruments of this era. I'll explain how measurements are made when we get to the demonstration portion of the video. Taking a look inside, you can see that it does not contain many components. All wiring is done using heavy, uninsulated bus wire. The wiring is done on two levels. This kept resistance low, improving accuracy. The manual stated that the accuracy of the bridge was in part dependent on the quality of the wiring. Major components include the switches, resistors and capacitors, and variable resistors. Most parts are of high accuracy. The capacitors used look a little different from the pictures in the manual, but appear to be original. This unit is the Hummer. It's quite an interesting and complex mechanical device. It produces a one kilohertz sine wave using a carbon element microphone and a relay armature in a feedback loop. It was used in similar impedance bridges made by companies like General Radio and has been around since at least the 1930s. It produces some audible sound when it's operating. I'll run through the types of measurements that the unit can make. 
I've connected the power jacks to a bench power supply and set it to 6 volts, the same as the battery that would have been used. Normally the external detector is a set of headphones like these. Another option if available would be to use an oscilloscope or sensitive AC voltmeter. For the demo I've connected to an amplified PC speaker so you can hear it in the video. Before making any measurements you should check that the meter is centered at zero and if not adjust it as needed. This rarely needs adjustment. The most basic measurement is DC resistance. For the unit under test, I'll use this resistance substitution box set to 1000 ohms. For accurate measurements, you'd want to keep the leads as short as possible. A component like a resistor can be directly connected to the unit's terminals. We connect the resistance under test to the R terminals. We set the selector switch to R and the detector switch to shunted galvanometer. We set the CRL dial to about 1 and set the generator switch to DC. We turn the multiplier switch to a range which brings the galvanometer nearest to zero while still to the left of it. Now we adjust the CRL dial to bring the meter to zero. We now set the detector switch to galvanometer to make it more sensitive and again adjust the CRL dial for a zero. Now we read the resistance value by taking the value of the CRL dial and multiply it by the range setting. The dial is very close to 1 and we're on the 1K or 1000 ohm multiplier range so the measured value is 1000 ohms. We can also measure the AC resistance of a resistor at 1 kilohertz. For a pure resistor, this should be the same as the DC resistance, but it can be used to measure the AC resistance of other components that are not pure resistors. In this case, we follow the same steps as before, but now we set the detector to external to use the headphones or speaker. And set the generator switch to 1KC. We adjust for minimum signal in the speaker. We can now read off the value of the AC resistance. For a resistor under test, it's again 1000 ohms as we would expect for a pure resistance. We can measure the inductance in Q of an inductor as follows. We connect the inductor under test to the LC terminals. Set the selector switch to LDQ. Set the detector to external detector. And set the generator switch to 1KC. We turn the range switch for a minimum signal. Then we adjust the CRL and DQ knobs for a null. Both have to be adjusted to get a null and there is some interaction. We can then read off the inductance value using the CRL knob position and the multiplier dial. In this case the value is about 0.8 times 10 millihenries, giving a value of 8 millihenries. The Q value can be read from the DQ dial, in this case a value of about 2. If the DQ setting needs to go above 10 to get a null, the mode should be switched from DQ to Q to measure high Q values. Then the Q dial is adjusted and the value read off of it. This dial goes from 10 to 1000. Now let's measure capacitance using this substitution box set for 0.1 microfarad. Capacitance in the D value for a capacitor is measured by connecting the cap under test to the LC terminals and the selector to CDQ. We follow the same process for, as for an inductor, adjusting the range and then both CRL and DQ for a null.
we read off the capacitance value and for D we have to multiply the DQ dial reading by 0 0.1. This cap reads close to 0 0.1 microfarad with a D factor of close to 0. If the D value is below 1 you can switch to the CD range and adjust the D dial for a null. This allows testing capacitors with smaller D values using a multiplier of 0 0.01. This capacitor is high quality and still reads close to zero on the D range. We can simulate a poorer capacitor with a higher ESR by putting a 220 ohm resistor in series with it. Now when we adjust for a null, we get a D value of about two. The bridge can only test at 1 kilohertz because the hummer is fixed in frequency. You can also use an external signal generator as the source by selecting EXT for generator and connecting the generator to the EXT gen terminals. This allows testing at a higher or lower frequency, which may be a more accurate test for an RF inductor or power supply filter choke. However, if you use headphones, it will have to be a frequency in the audible audio range. If instead you use an oscilloscope or AC voltmeter, you could use frequencies outside of the audio range. For greater accuracy of DC resistance measurements, the power supply voltage can be increased up to as much as 200 volts in series with a current limiting resistor, depending on the measurement range. This will allow adjusting the meter more accurately for a null. The manual gives more details. Finally, for comparison purposes, I wanted to show a more modern state-of-the-art LC meter. This model is a kit from almost all digital electronics. It measures inductance and capacitance and directly displays the value on a digital display. As you can see, it's much smaller, easier to use, and accurate. But of course, this kind of technology was not available in the 1950s. If you want to measure ESR, I would recommend this unit, the Blue ESR Meter from Anatech Corporation. It's also available as a kit or assembled, and it's most useful for testing electrolytic capacitors. I obtained this particular unit in a trade with a fellow radio amateur who gave it to me in exchange for an old Canadian Heathkit catalog. I have to admit that I had seen pictures of the IB1B, but when I got my hands on it, it was about twice as large in size as I had imagined. He gave me some history on it, saying that it belonged to a John Powers, who was an electrical engineer. He worked with Art Collins, the founder of Collins Radio Company, on antenna designs for the Navy. I found a copy of the manual on the internet. This was early in Heathkit's kit building days, and the 15-page manual does not provide anywhere near the level of detail on assembly that later manuals would have. It provides only about a page and a half of instructions and two pictorials showing wiring. It was assumed that someone who built this kit was knowledgeable in electronics. The unit arrived in good condition. As described earlier, it was modified to use an external power source by adding the two terminals at the top. Other than that, it looked all original. There are some small cracks and chips on some of the Bakelite connectors due to wear and tear over the years. The only restoration I did to it was a light cleaning and lubrication and using some contact cleaner on the switches. It checked out as fully functional. The top and inside of the front panel are engraved with US Army SIG C54268. So it must have been property of and used by the US Army Signal Corps. On the case I can see some faint remnants of stickers that were removed and traces of markings which appear to say property of US Army F test FTMONNJ. This might indicate that it had been used at Fort Monmouth in New Jersey, a large military base that included the Signal Corps. You can learn more about impedance bridges and other test equipment in my new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heathkit's test equipment products, starting with a brief history of Heathkit an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay.
Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from the author's Heathkit collection, covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The appendix provides a list of references and resources, including books, websites, and suppliers of parts, manuals, and related products and services, as well as a detailed product listing of every known model of test equipment produced by Heathkit. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon, and retails for U.S. $19.95. The IB-1B impedance bridge was one of the earlier test equipment kits offered by Heathkit. It was similar to commercial units of the time and was economical as it was offered in kit form. While large and awkward to use by today's standards, after over 60 years it's still functional. And with its dials and meter, I think it's quite fun to play with and to impress others. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.